The book is called The Contested Murder of Latasha Harlan's Justice, Gender, and the Origins of the L.A. Riots, published by Oxford University Press. The author is UCLA history professor Brenda Stevenson. Professor Stevenson, who was Latasha Harlins? Latasha Hollins was a 15-year-old African-American girl who lived in South Central Los Angeles. At the time of her death, she was living with her grandmother, her aunt, um, her cousins. She was a freshman in high school, and she was killed on March 16, 1991, in South Central in a store, the um, Empire Liquor Market, at 9172, I believe, Figueroa Street in South Los Angeles, um, by the shopkeeper. Uh, Mrs. Sunjadu. Why was she killed? She was killed because there was a struggle over a bottle of orange juice that cost $1.79. Latasha had entered the store, and we can see all of this on the theft uh, video camera within, within the store. She enters the store at about 9.30 a.m. She goes to the refrigerated cases. She picks up this bottle of orange juice, which I believe was a quart bottle. She places it in her backpack. The, stop, the top of it is protruding out. She walks forward to the counter. Mrs. Dew is there and she immediately asked Latasha if she was trying to steal her orange juice. And Latasha says, no, I'm not stealing your orange juice, I'm trying to pay for it. Well, obviously there's some kind of language differences um, and difficulties because Mrs. Du is a naturalized citizen, but she is from South Korea and her English is not particularly good. A at any rate, there is a heated argument that ensues and Mrs. Du catches Latasha by the arm, pulls, tries to pull her across the counter to see what's in the backpack. Latasha responds by punching Mrs. Du in the face a couple of times. She falls down. She gets back up again. She still tries to catch Latasha again and to pull the backpack off. At this time, the juice falls out of the, um, out of the, um, backpack. Mrs. Dew falls back behind the counter. When she stands up again, she has a gun in a holster in her hand. Latasha bends down, picks up the juice, puts it on the counter, looks at Mrs. Dew with the gun pointed at her, turns to walk away, and the gun goes off and she's shot in the back of the head. And that was the beginning of this very, very difficult case um, and circumstances for South Los Angeles. In your book, The Contested Murder of Latasha Harlins, you talk about her history, Latasha's history. What was her raising like? Well, Latasha had a very difficult history. She grew up in a loving home, but her family was troubled um, in the sense that her mother had been killed um, by an associate of her father when Latasha was only nine years old. And this was very devastating to her and her two siblings, as one might imagine. Her father was in and out of the home, um, and he was having difficulties with the law. He was associated with selling the drugs, breaking and entering, that kind of thing. Her grandmother mother really had taken her under her wing really as another child and was raising her. But one can only imagine when one's 15 years old um, and living in um, those circumstances when your mother has been killed, your father is missing um, because he left for, for St. Louis um, sometime after the murder of her, um, of her mother, uh, it was very difficult for her. I think she was trying to figure out who she was as a teenager, as a young woman, um, as a girl, you know, in her neighborhood. Um, she was dating someone who was much older than she was. Um, those kinds of things were going on in her life. But she also was a good student. And she also participated in school activities. And she also had lots of friends. And she also had lots of dreams. She wanted to become an attorney um, because her when her mother's killer had been sentenced, she only received three years in prison. And Latasha thought that was a huge injustice. Um, and so she wanted to become a lawyer so to make sure that this would not happen you know, to other people. So she had her own dreams and she had a loving family um, centrally around her, um, in her mother, her aunt, her cousin, um, et cetera, et cetera. But as you can see, it was a difficult life for her. You go into the fact that during this time period, uh, in South Central LA and other places that crack had become epidemic. 
crack had become epidemic. This is the end of the 1980s. This is in 1991 when she is killed. And her family was affected by that, um, her mother and also her father. And so, and everyone around her, you know, not other members of her families, but, you know, she'd walk home from school or she'd walk down the street and there would be people who, you know, were using the drug, were selling the drug, that kind of thing. It was a very, very difficult existence. I spoke to um, one of her schoolmates who had been with her in middle school and she talked about the impact of crack on the community and the kinds of things that girls had to you know deal with walking home and men who were drugged up you know uh, trying to elicit their attention and trying to you know speak to them in inappropriate ways and those kinds of things it was a frightening you know, time. At the same time that she was living in that area, um, too, there were two serial killers um, that were living fairly close to where she lived in the community. Um, and these people were targeting young African American women. So it was a very, very difficult place and time for her, even though her family always tried to protect her, of course. But, you know, oftentimes the protection. Um, is not enough when you're living in those kinds of difficult circumstances. Who is, and at the time, who was Soon Ja Du? Soon Ja Du was a 49-year-old um, Korean national who had become a citizen of the United States. She migrated or immigrated to the United States in 1976 with her husband, Billy Du, and their three children. Um, they began, like many immigrants, we hear this story of, you know, being well-educated. She had a college degree, as did her husband. He had been a major in the Korean Army. Uh, but because of their language skill or the lack of them, they were not able to place in that part of the economy, um, the professional part of the economy. Eventually, they saved enough money and were able to buy um, a grocery slash liquor store in the valley, in the San Fernando Valley. And then, um, a few years later, in 1988, they purchased the Empire Liquor Market in South Central Los Angeles. So what we know about Soon Ja Du is that she was a mother, she was a merchant, she was a wife, and she was a deaconess. Um, at her church. You write in your book that she considered herself elite in Korea, in South Korea, but that didn't necessarily, necessarily translate here in the States. She was an elite in South Korea. She had grown up in a small farming village, and her father was the only doctor um, in that particular village. And he had sent her from the village to Seoul, Korea, to be educated um, and um, in literature. And so, and she had married into a family in which her husband's family were industrialist, um, and also, as I said, had been in the military. And he was a teacher of um, Taekwondo um, and other kinds of martial arts. And so she was. Was an elite person and when she arrived um, in Los Angeles um, and they moved to first to Inglewood um, I don't think she was prepared um, psychologically to see you know um, struggling working-class families to see people who were of a different race than she or who was not Caucasian um, and to see the inner city difficulties for those persons in the working class and I think she did hold herself aloof to a certain extent and she thought that she was better um, than many of the people who ended up being her client base in South Central. What was her reputation or the reputation of the Empire Market in South Central? The, the Empire Liquor Market did not have a good reputation in South Central. And something had happened two years before Latasha was healed, was killed. A young man had ran into the store, a couple of people had run into the store. There was a shooting on the street and they, were, they ran in for cover. Well, Mr. Dew shooed them back out. He said, get out of my store. Because, of course, he's trying to avoid any trouble um, himself. Well, when this young man went back out, he was shot. He was hurt very badly, um, and the community thought, how could you have shoot him out of your store um, in the middle of this gun battle? Didn't you know this was going to happen? They also had a reputation for being very rude um, to their customers um, and not selling the most 
or the best kinds of food um, as well. There also was something of a growing um, difficulty with those persons who sell liquor in the community because of the lack of green grocers um, in South Los Angeles, South Central at the time. People really wanted green grocers and not liquor stores. Of course, liquor stores produce a lot of income, but they don't necessarily serve well the community. So the store was not well liked by many people within the community. This happened on March 16, 1991. What was the press reaction? What was the 